Hey everyone, welcome to another build order tutorial. This time we're going to have another Zerg versus Terran macro build order, except this time it won't be Ling based, it'll be Roach based. Now, there's also a couple other differences in this build order than the last Zerg versus Terran one. One, you're going for Roaches, as stated, so remember that. Two, I will be using drone counts occasionally, not times or general supplies to dictate when to build something. That's a very important Zerg uh, tool or, or guide or know-how to, to actually follow your favorite pros, to actually follow their drone count over anything else. And then lastly, your ultimate, uh, you know, goal with this build is actually not to get to ultras, necessarily, but to rather get to uh, upgraded roaches and perhaps uh, a greater spire for broodlords. Also, this build will incorporate a neat little ling attack to be used uh, against a Terran player who has built their command center on the low ground, which is going to be most Terrans. And unless they're going for like a three racks or they're just really, really, okay, really Okay, with all that safe. out of the way, let's so get for that build. The build, order. build your drone first. A 13 Overlord. Two more drones. And a third one. At around 170 minerals, send a drone down to your natural to build your natural hatchery. And that comes down at 17. Build one more drone. Two more drones. And then 18, build your gas geyser. At 17, build your spawning pool. Put your guys in a gas. Build a couple more drones. And an overlord at 19. When your spawning pool finishes, start two queens and take one drone off of gas and build four lings. Start your metabog boost. Put an overlord at 30. Your queens will pop, inject, and then immediately build a third queen. Build overlord speed from a hatchery. Another little difference in this build order. Build an overlord. From here on out, just make sure you don't get supply blocked. At this point, you will have scouted ideally a CC on the low ground, so we're gonna build about 16 to 20 lings. Speed is finished up around this time. You should put one more guy back in that gas. That's something that I definitely missed. And send your lings across the map to your opponent. Ideally, this will get some damage done and will force them to stop mining from their natural. At around 30 drones, 30 drones, 
Take your third base. Around four minutes, take your second gas and build another queen. I'm going to pull back here because I don't want to actually win the game, but presumably you've lost most of your lings in this attack. A spore crawler around now at your natural just to help against liberator defense or drop defense. Not a necessity. Around here, and it's gonna be 35 drones. Build your roach warren and another 20 lings. Especially if you have lost all the other lings. Don't forget to saturate your gas. Which I did forget. Go to Queen. Your Overlord Speed should have finished, so you should be getting some free scouting in their main base to ensure they're not going mech or something super weird. Build a couple of roaches. Make sure you're not getting supply block and spread your creep. Keep your extra queens on a hot key because they will be used in the army engagement. At around 40 to 50 drones, you're going to build your two evolution chambers, a lair, and a handful of more roaches, and then yeah, a handful more than that. So you should be at around 20 roaches. Uh, reason being, this is actually a very common timing attack, or attack for timing rather that the Terran can throw at you, and you want to be prepared. They might even attack sooner, and as always, playing Zerg, your reactive race, so keep tabs on the map. Whenever you have pushed back, whatever they have thrown at you, or they're just not throwing anything at you, go back into droning. This is when your economy is really going to start booming, so around 55 drones. Gets 1-1, one, one. that's missile attack, not melee attack, as well as additional gases. Now at this point, you're also probably defending multiple drops and splitting up your army. But try to remember, in around seven minutes, you're going to be getting three more queens. I've taken my guess a little early, but now's a good time to take them as well. And make sure to get that roach speed as your lair finishes. Again, in a regular game, you will have been defending against multiple attacks and trading army and constantly having to replace army as well, so this is a bit of a hard uh, exact build that I'm showing you to follow. But the general idea is to hit your drone timings. Your drone uh, Drones tell you a lot about when to get your economy going, uh, your tech going rather, as well as your extra bases. And then, as the game continues, once you safely get up to around 65 drones, let's say, you get plus two, plus two. Uh, you get your infestation pits, especially, only when you consider it safe. At around 74 drones, or maybe only 70, depending on how greedy you think you can be, you're also going to grab your hive and your fourth base. And should you choose to go for the broodlord path, get a spire along with your hive. All right, let's talk about the build a little bit. Suggested maps, uh, like the last Zerg macro build order, any is fine. Uh, one little difference is that I might have talked about Dance on Station being a little difficult for that last build order. Uh, not so much when you actually go Roaches. Of course, a macro build on any small map is always going to be a little difficult to pull off, but Roaches are actually a safer, more head-to-head uh, -head unit uh, that you can use. So you might see that played more often on those. 
on that map. Uh, strengths and weaknesses. So, so first off, uh, strengths. Solid macro foundation. A lot of these are going to sound familiar if you've been watching the last Strength Builder because a lot of them are very similar. Queens, uh, Queen News provides solid defense. So you actually saw us get quite a few queens over the course of time, and they will be used during all of your engagements for transfuse as well as targeting medevacs. Uh, roaches specifically provide a more forgivable unit than lings. That doesn't mean that you can throw them away no problem, but it does mean that if uh, you know one of them triggers a widow mine, that doesn't mean that suddenly 20 lings and 10 bane lings are going to go down with said widow mine. Uh, the early overlord speed that this build incorporates, but you can actually put into any zerg build that you would like, means anything can be scouted and thus should be defended against as you react accordingly as a zerg player. Uh, and finally, the Broodlord transition can surprise opponents because a lot of the typical ZVTs you'll find on ladder are going to use Ultralisk more often. The Terran player can oftentimes just not even bother to scan, they'll just assume. And that can be a huge surprise for them. Uh, weaknesses. Improper placement of units can result in instant loss. Same deal as the last Zerg build order. So basically, if you have all of your roaches in one hotkey and they have just chilled out them in the you know the front of your bases and there's like a huge gym up in your main, okay, you're not gonna have a great time defending against that. Uh, additionally, improperly split roaches can be beaten by bio. So same deal with the improper placement, but even like more so. Uh, whereas lings and banelings, say like you put down ten lings and four banelings, that can be very hard to drop against. Uh, usually you can just leave them and forget about them and the Terran won't be able to micro against it. Roaches are a little bit different. They're going to be looking specifically to catch something like improperly split roaches. So only uh, if 10 roaches against 4 medevacs, that's going to go in the medevacs' favor and they will dare to beat that. And you let that happen once or twice and then three times, four times, and suddenly you just don't have a main army to use. Uh, of course, this... Style is less quick than the Ling style, so you will have difficulty responding to drops and you will need to learn to split your units very well. And lastly, uh, similar to the last style, the Zerg style, uh, Zerg Ling style rather, you are going to have limited map control. This is even uh, more so for this build though. Actually, in some of the Zerg Roach. Uh, macro games you'll see they'll have even skipped speed so that really limits their map control It's just something that you're gonna have to be used to is is being defensive uh, as well as uh, You're gonna have to Consider that if the game goes longer than four or five bases that there's not many ways you can actually deny the Terran's planetary forces Or get run bys and it's gonna be a little bit more difficult with roaches than with pure speedling and baneling Alright, tips and tricks. So five minutes is the timing of the standard 2 on one Terran push. Uh, this is the time where they will move out and it's up to you to see exactly when they're hitting and whether they're dropping or pushing. Invest in one or two spur crawlers in common harassment locations, same tip as last time, because it is an effective tip. It not only deals with liberator harassment, it also deters drops uh, or just straight up kills them if they actually commit to it. Always target fire medivacs with queens, so this doesn't just go for the first or second attack or for the drops, but even in big main engagements, this can actually save you a lot of trouble, as your corrosive biles probably will not be able to hit, and they'll probably be moving tanks around all the time. Holding off your fourth, or even sometimes your third, can be okay. To elaborate on that a little bit, uh, oftentimes you'll see a 3 racks Reaper build versus a Zerg player on Frozen Temple, for instance. I'm sure a lot of you have seen that in pro games. And you'll see the third base isn't even taken that quickly, or just like heavily delayed. Uh, luckily, the game still goes on, doesn't always uh, end in a forfeit loss, like economic loss. For the Zerg player, uh, especially when you get to corrosive biles uh, and even infestors, if you decide to go that path, you're just gonna have an army that can kind of scare the Terran. Um, so, yeah, they might take some good engagements, but sometimes they'll also just be too scared of the firepower that you have on spell based units to commit. So you can actually survive on maybe not having like this huge booming economy 
and hopefully you're keeping your army intact by taking wise engagement. So that goes even more so to your fourth base, uh, which you'll probably more often typically have to hold off on as your units are not very responsive. You might be thinking like, oh, I haven't got my fourth base, what am I going to do? Don't necessarily worry about it that much, as long as your drone count is good and your minerals are still relatively healthy. If you can get some good tech-based units out, so again, infestors, curse of biles, or hell, even to your hive, you might still be okay. Uh, invest in a few ravagers early, so I did talk about ravagers, so you're gonna actually invest in at least three right off the bat to hopefully deal with tanks or just to really scare the bio into either splitting or retreating, but of course as the game goes on, think about committing to more ravagers as your army gets bigger. This build can be adapted to only have one uh, upgrade and that upgrade is going to be prioritized for the armor actually this uh, build is entirely defensive you're not going to be pushing out and looking for a timing or anything like that you are just trying to get to well upgraded roaches and potentially hive tech whether that is ultras or a rear spire is up to you excuse me and sometimes you'll see zerg players actually just skip going for the missile attack as long as their units are living and can be reused for another attack then that is good enough for them finally build infestors before hive for a combo corrosive bile and fungal this is a wombo combo to the fullest the epitome of it if you can catch two of these spells on a group of units they will absolutely die so while this build that I showcased kind of just skyrocketed right up to Hive and to Spire because, uh, well, I was obviously safe versus the AI, but the build that I got it from Snoots was also very safe. Uh, you can actually choose to go along that path. Or if you want to play more of a kind of a mid-game focus, if you think you can actually wear them down with fungals and uh, curse of biles, or you just do not think you can actually get to a greater Spire, and that does take a very long time, then invest into infestors and again just take wise engagement so that your army lasts as long as possible without having to remake it. As always you don't have to follow my word for how to do this build and in fact you probably shouldn't with how often Zerg has to react to different builds of their opponents things never very perfect so that's why today uh, for this video rather there's been an extra emphasis on drone counts over time or general supply counts so with that in mind, take a look at these professional games. You'll find some of these are from Snoots, who is probably the most popular for continuing to use roaches and investors, versus Terran, and some from some others. Lastly, if you did enjoy this content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel down below. If you liked it, then feel free to leave a comment. If you thought something that needs to be really worked on, uh, please let in the comments as well, as nice as possible, and I'll try and work on it. Additionally, if you have any build orders that you would like for me to give to you, basically, in a nice, easy uh, audio and uh, visual format, then also list that down below. The reason that I did this build order was because someone had said I want to see a build order where uh, it's EVT and the Zerg used roaches as opposed to lings. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll put that on my list. And I think two, three weeks later, here it is. So it actually works, guys. And I would love to more specifically target my uh, build orders for you since if this is working out for you guys, and that makes me really happy. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you next week with another build order tutorial.